Hey guys, so it's been about a month or so since I posted a video, and that's because I've been working on a side project that's been eating up most of my time. If you've been in the Discord, you probably already know what that is, but I finally finished it, so I decided I'd make a video on it and show you guys what I've been working on. So I made a piranha plant styled Nintendo Switch dock, and I think it came out pretty nice, but there's a whole story about how I came about with the idea and then about how I went about making it. All right, now for the story time. So in November of 2023, I purchased my first 3D printer. I've never had any prior knowledge or used one even prior, and I wasn't even sure if I was going to like it. So I happened to have a friend that was also interested and we went half and half on a starter printer. I think I even made like a community post about it on YouTube when I got it. Um, but long story short, I ended up liking it and I upgraded my printer shortly after. So I have a Bamboo Labs P1S now. Now that's the story on how I got the printer. Now, if you're like me, uh, this was around Christmas time, and I'm the kind of person when I want something, I just save up my money and go get it. I won't wait eight months for a birthday or something to stroll along for me to get that item. And that is kind of like a shoot myself in the foot situation because in Christmas time, when I buy all the things that I like, I kind of have nothing. People are like, what do you want for Christmas? I'm like, ah, I don't know. And that kind of leads to me just mindlessly browsing the internet, which is how I found the Piranha Plant Switch Dock. Now, I found this thing over on Etsy, and it's kind of my fault, but I really didn't look into it when I bought it. I just saw the picture, I was like, whoa, that's awesome, and I added it to a Christmas list. And that's kind of what we do in my family, so we don't have to just randomly buy things for each other, we just buy things that we want. So uh, I put it on there, and my fiance bought it for me for Christmas, and I have to tell you, the thing was uh, kind of poo-poo, a little, little poo-poo. Um, the the piece itself, I'll have future Jeremy leave some B-roll for you guys to look at. Now, the problem with this design is that it's very tall and very skinny. Um, I don't really have a problem with it in terms of like the quality of like how it looks, but if I put my Nintendo Switch in this, it is definitely going to tip over and break. I mean, look how wobbly this thing is. Now, since this is my fault and I shopped around by looking by picture, I didn't read the description that says, hey, this whole assembly needs to be done with glue. And even with glue, I would not trust this thing. I still didn't glue it, I'm not, I'm not going to, but I would not trust this setup with it. And I'm surprised as many people bought it as they did. Uh, another funny thing that I like to look at too is once I was doing this video and doing research for this video, I looked this up again on Etsy and there's several sellers selling like the same iteration of this, just in like slightly different colors. You get like a dark green vine, but it's always this head with no teeth. So it's like somebody got a hold of the STL file and was like, hey, I'm gonna copy this and make an Etsy profile. But anyways, after getting this, I really liked the design. I was kind of upset that I didn't want to use it and kind of a waste of money because my fiance spent, I think about a hundred dollars on it. So after seeing every single model was pretty much the same on Etsy, it really lit a fire under me to have something different that actually I could trust my switch in. So uh, this led to my first problem. I know nothing about 3D modeling. I didn't know what program to use or how to use them. So it led into like a bunch of different trial and error projects. So I started off with a recommendation from a friend with Tinkercad. Uh, Tinkercad is a pretty cool software where you can essentially take predefined shapes and build your model off of those shapes. Um, this was good. And since I didn't know anything about modeling, I actually started with the teeth of my model in Tinkercad. Um, the problem though, Tinkercad looks a little weird when you go to 3D print it, just the, the faces on the model kind of look bad. So after I spent hours learning it and getting a good mouth together, I was like, ah, I don't think it's going to look good if I 3D print this. I'm going to have to use a different program. And that led me to going to Blender. And Blender had a huge learning curve for me where I just, I couldn't pick it up. Every time I wanted to do something different, I was like, how do I do this? What, what's the hotkey for this? Luckily enough, I had a friend who knew Blender and is very experienced in it. So when I told him what I was trying to do, he kind of helped me recreate the teeth that I made in Tinkercad in Blender, which is fantastic. So now the, the teeth actually look solid and we have something to go off of. Um, but the problem was I wanted this to be my project. I didn't want to do the project with a friend and be like, hey man, how do I do this? And then he does it and then it's not really my project. So I had to keep doing Blender on my own and Eventually I hated it. I just like, I don't like, I don't like Blender. I'm not using Blender anymore. So this led to the third program. I went to Fusion 360 and luckily I was able to import the teeth that I made into Fusion 360 and then go from there. And Fusion 360, I really like. So basically with Fusion 360, you have to create a sketch of everything you want to design. So if you can draw it, essentially you can create it. 
Uh, thinking about the piranha plant, it's really a sphere for the head with some lips. It's got a tube, like a vine body going down, and then it's coming out of a warp pipe or a vase, which are all simple objects. So I figured it'd be relatively easy to make it in this application. And that's what I actually went. So now I can go over the overall designs of everything that I came up with for this and how I went about printing them. Uh, the one thing I will say before I started though, I mentioned earlier that I had to glue the old one, everything, every single piece together, the neck, the body, into the pot, all of it. I designed mine here to be all threaded. So everything here from the head to the stem, to the innards, to the pot lip, everything's threaded. So I didn't have to do any glue because I just wanted to eliminate that altogether. Plus glue may give out over time. At least a thread is relatively sturdy until you wear the threads out. So that's what I did. But anyways, on to Fusion 360. So back to what I was saying earlier about the piranha plant being made out of basic shapes. Uh, starting off with the head, I think we can get away with just doing a sphere. Now, I already took all my measurements ahead of time. I'm just kind of recreating what I already did so you guys can see how I went about with this. Uh, but with the sphere, I ended up creating like a little object, I'm going to call it, that I can just insert into the mouth to kind of make it look like uh, a Pac-Man figure almost. Um, from there, obviously, it looks like it has its mouth open. All I had to do was um, join the teeth to the mouth to kind of just make it smooth out the surface, if that makes sense. Uh, I'm still not going to be the best at explaining everything that I'm doing, and I'm not going to bother showing you the hours I spent into just getting the head to look right. I'll just show you all the good pieces of when it's looking nice. Um, the other problem I had with the head is that this thing has to plug in, right? So uh, I had to fit a USB-C cable in through the bottom, which you can see down here at the bottom of the model here. And again, I already took my measurements on everything, but... I made an interlocking component here where I built the shape of the USB-C cable going, let's say vertically. And then I combine the shape again, same exact size going horizontally. Uh, and then I only go about halfway up the block, which creates like a locking mechanism for if you insert the USB-C into the locking piece, twist the cable and pull down and that should keep it in place. Um, you can probably glue this in to, if you don't want it to move at all, but I think I might want to get into here at some point, so I'm not going to build this model around gluing it. And I already mentioned in the beginning I didn't want to use glue. So yeah, after I made this piece, I just had to incorporate it into the head. And this is what the finished head looks like with the mouth hole and the teeth. Now, obviously, I made a slant in the middle of the mouth. I made a dummy switch block. That's what I call it anyway. So it has roughly the measurements of the Nintendo Switch to fit in there. That's how I kind of know it'll be accurate when it fits. Um, and then from there, I just kind of centered that hole and created that little lip piece that's in the back of the switch. That way the switch won't slide out of place once it's in the mouth. Now, after the head looks relatively done, the last thing would be to add the spots to it. And I know I just said no glue, but there was kind of no way I could get the spots in. If you look at the old head from the previous model, it looks like the whole thing was printed in white and then a red shell was placed around it. Uh, this one, and I'm going to be a little different with mine. I'm going to create divots that just go maybe two or three centimeters deep. And then I will uh, extrude those divots two or three centimeters, cut them, and then print them separately. And that way I can just glue them into place. But since it's only six plus the teeth, I guess I'll let the glue pass on this one. But I don't want to use any more glue at this time. And after the divots were created, the last thing to do was add threading to the bottom. Now, Fusion 360 actually has a cool threading tool. So if you go over to create, you can go down to thread and then just literally attach threads of your choice and size to your model. And it even has a feature where it will auto assign the thread type judging by the size of the area that you're putting it in. So that's really cool. But after that was done, we have our head complete. And the next thing to do is just 3D print it. So I went to Amazon, I bought all my colors for all the models ahead of time. And I bought uh, Overture Super Red PLA Plus for the head. And then we'll just take it over to the printer from there and I'll show you guys a little uh, time lapse of it being built. Now the P1S kind of has a crappy camera. I guess I could have done it with mine, but it would have taken a very long time. But here's just a quick fast forwarded video of the head being created. Notice here that I had to print the teeth separately. Uh, I don't have an attachment on my printer that lets me print in multiple colors. So I had to print this in several different objects, 14 in total actually, but we'll get more on that in a little bit. And this is what our finished head looks like when it's all done. Honestly, it came out really well. I was a little nervous because I printed this with supports, but it looks like the supports didn't leave any visible marks anywhere on the model, which is great. You can also see in the left corner here, I printed the spots as well. So I'm gonna have to glue those in. And I also went ahead and did the teeth as well. So I can give you guys a good representation of how the head's gonna look, at least with the teeth in for now. 
but unfortunately I will have to glue both of these in. Now, remember how I just went over, we're doing basic shapes and I created the head out of a sphere. Well, the vine's basically a pipe and Fusion 360 also has a pipe feature. So if you go to create, you can go down to pipe. And then from there, you can use splines to shape your pipe to whatever you want. And I went with roughly the same shape as the other one. Now, the main difference here that I'm doing with my pipe is I'm only going to make one. The other model is uh, two separate pipes combined into one tall one. I think that's where the problem is, where everything's too tall and too wobbly. But I'm basically going to make one medium sized pipe that's going to be a lot thicker and better than that one. Uh, another thing I can do to make it look different is add some thorns to the side. So I did just that going right up the sides. With this, I just kind of positioned them in any order and didn't really matter where I put them as long as it just kind of looked good to my eye. So now we have the pipe looking a little different, but we still have to add the Joy-Con holders. Now the Joy-Con holders, I had to take measurements all from the old one because I wasn't sure how to create it, uh, which led to a lot of different test pieces that broke and ones that worked, but I'll get into that in a second. But making the Joy-Con holders was actually really simple. So you just had to make a block and then create uh, little slits on both sides for the Joy-Cons to slide into. And then you just had to make sure you go down the proper length so they don't go too far or stop too soon. Uh, other than that, it was just attaching them to the pipe. And before I even continue with the next step here, I wanted to tell you that you can see that I have this little stem that's attached to this. This actually broke off on my first test print of the pipe, and that's because I didn't even think about reinforcing these. So I had to go back in and really attach this thing to the model so it wouldn't go anywhere. But now with those Joy-Con holders reinforced, this is what the tube looks like. I still have to go through and add the threading, which will be another problem on its own. But uh, let's see if I can just add the head to here so you guys can see a rough idea of what it looks like. Um, now, the only thing I'm really worried about is whether they're going to connect together and fit together in the proper ways, but I'll find that out after I print everything. According to the model though, when I look at it, it should connect just fine. But let's go ahead and get this piece printed as well. And again, here's a little time-lapse video of it being printed. And what it looks like when it's all finished. Again, there's some supports here and supports do kind of leave a mark on the model. I guess I can't avoid sanding altogether. So there are gonna be some areas I have to touch up, but overall this looks really nice. So now we can start working on something pretty fun, the warp pipe. Now the pipe, this is what it looks like. And it has a lip that kind of hangs out over the side. And to put it simply, you can't print a roof on nothing. So I would have to add supports around that whole ring, which would kind of make it look bad and probably leave a mark underneath, which I don't want to do. So I decided to print the pot in three different parts. You have the, the base tube, you're gonna have that lip printing separately, and then we're gonna have that little switch game holder that's in the previous model, and I'll get more on that in a second. Now, the tube aspect is pretty simple. It's just an open cylinder. Uh, all I had to do was add threads to the top, which again, Fusion 360 made that pretty easy. And then from there, I had to make a motherboard enclosure for the switch dock guts to sit in there, and that was, Relatively easy. I just kind of made a case and then I merged it into the model of the tube after I was done making it and it came out a little ugly in the back, but I tried to spruce it up as best as I can. Really, I don't think it came out terrible, but I think if I knew what I was doing a little better, I could spruce it up a little better. Um, but moving on, let's start with the lip. Now, because I wanted to make the model into three different parts, I had to make the lip of the tube double threaded. And what I mean by that is if I look on the inside here, we have this top ring here, which is gonna house the switch game holders. It'll screw into that. And then underneath here is a separate set of threads that will screw into the tube itself, making it look like the warp pipe. And uh, I mean, looking at it, it was pretty simple. I just created a ring that was the same size as the tube and added threads and then made a couple of measurements too for the switch game holders. But yeah, the lip was pretty simple. Now the switch game holder, I made about 20 millimeters tall, so it would screw in relatively deep and have like a good seating to where it wouldn't wiggle around once it's inside of the pot. All the slits in the middle here will house Nintendo Switch games, which I just went ahead and measured my games with a caliper and then created the slits individually here. And I added, you can see threads in the middle. Once again, Fusion 360 made that pretty easy. And the threading's along the side for it to screw into the lip. And then lastly, I made a little spot for your thumb here just to kind of twist this together and make it easy to screw in. Because I, when I made a test print of this piece, it was actually hard for me to unscrew once I got it screwed because there was nothing to hold on to. So the thumb was actually a second revision. Now, since these are three different relatively large pieces, I have to do three separate prints for these. So let's go ahead and skip to the time lapses of these being printed.
So our two pieces of the warp pipe turned out really nice. All I have to do is just screw them together and make sure they fit. I added just a little tiny line to the lip that lines up with the back of the pot. And that's just so I know when I'm screwing it, where to stop and where the ending should be when everything's all lined up. But it looks like everything lined up correctly and I was right about what I said about the threads earlier. So now the last thing for me to do is just to print the Switch game holder. And for this, I decided to go with brown because brown looks a little more like dirt in the pot, you know, but I guess you can go with black or any other color really. But brown seemed to come out nice and look really well. Now all I have to do is just twist it together and make sure every piece that I have so far fits. All right, looks like everything lines up properly, so I guess I don't have to worry about the threads anymore and everything's looking pretty good. All I have to do now is just work on putting those spots on the head and I gotta show you guys how the motherboard fits in down at the bottom of the pot. So the spots are pretty simple. I'm not gonna dwell on this. I printed them all standing up. That way they'd have kind of a smoother finish and then I glued them into place. Um, but moving on to the pot, the enclosure that I put at the bottom, I already made several test prints of. So I know the screws and everything for that board line up and work well. So I didn't really have to worry too much about the, the measurements of that. I just had to worry about making it look good in the pot. But just plugging these and unplugging them, everything seems to fit pretty well. The last step to do, honestly, is just wire everything up and show you guys how it works. Now, when I plug this in, I have this little piece that I connect the USB-C extension cable to. This is what's going to run up the tube into the mouth. So this is going to stay down here at the bottom of the pot. And I created these two hooks that are on the side of the pot. This is just for the USB-C cable to travel through to kind of tighten it up because I, when I finished the model, I realized that it was a little too long. So the only reason it's here is just to kind of shorten the cable up. Uh, what I didn't intend was that it would actually be nice and tight to where I didn't have to use glue. I thought I was going to have to use glue at least to, you know, keep the ports from unplugging accidentally, but I haven't had an issue. The gluing something I might go do in the future because hot glue can easily be removed with just a little bit of cotton swab and rubbing alcohol. But as of right now, I did not need glue for this model. Assembling it was a bit of a pain because once I had it attached to those hooks on the wall, it made it a little too tight. So I had to use a pair of pliers to pull it through. But honestly, I think that's what makes it sit great in the mouth. And you can see here, the, the cable doesn't get pushed through all the way down to the, the mouth. So you don't have to worry about the cable getting lost down the pipe. And again, I suppose I could avoid this by just gluing it in altogether, but say the cable ever goes bad, that'll be a problem if I ever have to go back and unglue those things. So I think I'm gonna leave that as is as well. And with that being said, this is the result of the final model. Everything on this turned out fantastic. I love the way it looks. I had fun making it. It was a very time consuming process though. Like I was working on this almost every single day for like a month, staying up with late nights and all that stuff. So. I do have a plan in the future for making these little Joy-Con holders chargeable. Uh, you might notice that the motherboard that I put on the inside had two USB ports facing on the inside. That's just in case I decided to make that attachment. The, um, the pieces on the inside would already be ready to go and I wouldn't have to upgrade or anything like that. And all I'd have to do once I figure out how that works is just to swap out the pipe in the middle. So that's pretty cool. But I had a lot of fun making this. Uh, I'm definitely going to be continue on with 3D printing projects. And honestly, it, it really made me want to start a second channel dedicated to 3D printing. But uh, I don't know when I'll get around to that. But I had a lot of fun. So that's about it for me. I'm going to end the video here. If you guys have any questions, leave it down in the comments below. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Adios.